my name is Robert Fenwick Smith. I'm the founder and managing director of Aravipa Ventures here in Colorado. Um, Aravipa is a fund uh, that uh, I started back in uh, 2008 uh, with the idea of investing only in Colorado early stage uh, efficiency tech companies. We chose a, a sub-segment uh, that uh, we labeled efficiency tech which effectively goes after companies that look at creating uh, better utilization of resources. For example, buildings are the number one users of electricity in this country country by a long way. Uh, and, uh, we have many aspects in buildings that are less uh, efficient than one could want. And, and then generally what happens is if we are more efficient, yes, then as the population grows, at the very least we can hope to consume the same amount of resources with a higher population. And uh, We look at that not only from an energy point of view, which is you know, the general number one focus out there, but also from a water efficiency. Well, we've got seven portfolio companies at this stage, so uh, and we've got about eight million dollars uh, invested and deployed in those seven companies. Um, yes, the impact, therefore, at this stage is is limited. Although we we have just got funding uh, for uh, Ravenbrick, one of our portfolio companies, and we're going to create a smart window factory in Denver. So that's going to have a, a real impact uh, locally on actually creating jobs also, but uh, creating a factory that will, will, will be producing the, the most efficient windows in the world right here in Denver. We just now got the funding, meaning last week. Oh, so right. just now. <laughs> uh, so you're the first ones who actually hear about it. So uh, uh, and now it'll take us about 12 months to get the factory up and running. We generally don't invest in a company that's going to need more than 5 million capital. Uh, we have consistently found uh, investors over that period to whom the, the notion of investing in a for-profit fund, but at the same time that has a green and local impact, has been interesting. And, and we've seen the passion that some of our shareholders bring to our to our meetings and it's, it's, it's nice to see. Uh, on the other hand, I will admit from time to time you run into investors who we present to and they just say, hey, you know, the impact side of it is of no interest to me. I, wanna, I want the highest potential return and I feel that because you're talking about the impact, uh, you're obviously saying I'll give you impact because I'll give you less of a return. Uh, and trying to fight that notion that if you invest with, in an impact fund is going to give you a lower return that's, I think there's a certain amount of challenge there. Meaning I don't, I don't think there's too many people out there who accept that an impact fund can have as good a, or better return than a cold-blooded fund, to use a, <laughs> a different word for the other side, yeah? So I, I do think there is that perception among a lot of people that it's either impact or profitability. And they, they, they don't get that the two are perfectly uh, capable of meshing and being one and the same thing. And especially I can say in my area of, of efficiency tech, the two are 100% linked. There's, you know, if the technology is successful, you have the impact. If the technology is successful, you have the profits. So yeah, absolutely aligned. We moved to Boulder and I decided to build, we decided to build a home. Uh, we decided to build a lead platinum home. So I got involved in the, the construction of the Lee Platinum Home and in the process discovered how generally accepted what I would view antiquated stupid things were on an efficiency point of view. So why would people build a, a home like this instead of a one that had all the efficiencies in it? Why? And what they mean by that is lowest first cost not lowest life cycle cost. So you have this obsession with lowest first cost and that's why you build all these houses that are inefficient. Uh, in, in Europe it's very different, you know, you're building a house and it's for the rest of your life and so the view, the optic is very different and often it's even multi-generational homes. So uh, the, the, I, was, I was pretty shocked. Um, that was one of the things that really triggered it, was building that house and seeing, you know, yeah, these technologies are available to everyone. The, uh, the US GBC uh, uh, had the intention with Lee to create uh, a, 
a scoring system to create uh, uh, buildings that would be uh, better for the human beings and better for the planet. Whereas LEED also cares about water efficiency and more importantly, they care about the health of the people in a building. So there's a lot about air quality in LEED, you know, in-room in, in, in air quality, which is very, very important, you know, keeping formaldehydes out, keeping, keeping Vox out. So we don't look just at energy. Yes, we have certain products that have mainly an energy impact and Raven Brick with their smart windows, it's mostly an energy. And so there we can do a very clear calculation with how much energy will be saved by the window. And that's then measured in reduced air conditioning load and used he reduced heating load. And we can show very precisely with models provided by the major labs in the world on what savings you will have in a building for using it. Same thing at Lightning Hybrid. We have a hydraulic hybrid system. We, in, in shuttle bus cycles or delivery or delivery truck cycles, we can save 30 to 35 percent of the of the gas. So, so the Sundelier, we feel strongly, we bring daylight to people. So we bring productivity, we bring health, we bring extra sales and environments. But you would be surprised how difficult it is in a, in a very, very bean counting world to get people to do that math. It's so easy. <laughs> I, don't, I don't think of myself as a humanitarian. So um, two things, I, I do feel that higher prices on, on gas and water would, would lead to behavior modification that in the medium to long term would be to the world's benefit. We do have one company in the in the in the portfolio called Aware. It's, it's basically a software, and it's cloud-based, so it sits up there in the internet, and you can access it from everywhere. And what we do is we help uh, international development organizations become more efficient. Here. Our largest clients are people like Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation, uh, World Cocoa Foundation, and a number of agricultural development things, and also then President's Malaria Initiative in Africa. So we just finished a, a project in Uganda. We're looking at doing projects in Ethiopia. And follow up. A development project would be funded by USAID or someone, and they'd go out and three years later, they'd bring the report and say, this is what we've done. Uh, clearly, that's a very, very old fashioned way. And it means that you only have a chance then to implement the, the improvements three years later, once the study has shown. And so the surveys, when someone, when a numerator goes out in the field, uh, into the fields or into the villages to, you know, be it count bed nets for mosquitoes or, you know, see how the crops are growing if it's on the ag side. Uh, the moment he enters the data, it's there. It's immediately time stamped and location stamped because your smartphone could do both of those. The useful data to drive decisions is normally three to six months. We take that three to six months and we collapse it into a maximum a week. So that means that the, the organizations who are trying to do this development, they can see the progression and the impact as it's happening. And they can take corrective actions. Or they can ask different questions the next day if they all of a sudden see something happening. And the, and the, and the data can be mashed with other studies and shared with other studies to enter and affect what they're looking at. So it's a real turning development into real time versus a very slow process and therefore being able to you know be able to affect and, and have an impact on on that part of the world much much faster and in a much more intelligent fashion so it's the impact we're having with uh, with aware in that sense is we are we are really changing the way you do international development uh, and we're getting a lot of resistance from some of the people because obviously it was a very cozy world for a lot of people you know you had three year deadlines yeah you can live with three year deadlines you can have a lot of gin and tonics on a three year deadline on a on a on a day to day deadline it becomes slightly more stressful uh, aware is not a not-for-profit, so Aware is a is a is a is an IT provider to those development. And to be clear, we compete for those projects with the IBMs of this world and with the Accentures. So the the nonprofits have all, have in in most cases subcontracted their IT platforms. So one of the neat things is a lot of these uh, donors actually would like the data to be shared. 
because they're paying for it. So Bill and Melinda Gates, for example, you know, funds a specific project uh, for agricultural development. And with those funding clauses, they have the right to the data and they have the right to share the data. But historically, that sharing of the data has been extraordinarily difficult also. But with our cloud-based platform, we can help those donors pretty much the day after it's being got. We can share it with everyone out there. So there's not only the fact that the organizations can use the data better, but the data can be shared better so that you know other people out in the field can use that data to improve the situation. So it's, it's not only the speed of data, but also the sharing of the data across whoever, whoever can create improvement with it, which is so much faster and, uh, and easy. Because it's... I do think water efficiency is uh, critical, and you know, and, and water efficiency, and there is still that perception I think that uh, impact investing has a higher risk. So I think the thing that would help the most is a clear demonstration in a statistically meaningful fashion that impact investing can be just as just as low. Uh, can have the same risk level and the same return level as any other form of investing. I think once that is overcome, then at that moment, then, they, then, then pretty much why wouldn't you do impact investing? But having an impact on your own country should also be part of it. And I, I think if you look at what Bill and Melinda Gates are doing, for example, they've understood that very well. Uh, and that there's some things that need to be done here also. And if we don't have, if we don't change certain things here in the U.S., there's no point changing them at the other end of the world. So don't lose perspective on that. Yeah. Uh, so I only invest in Colorado with Arabica. And, uh, and I'm a Brit and I only invest in Colorado. So go figure that one. Uh, and we decided very early that the biggest impact we can have on our portfolio companies is if they're all within an hour's drive of our office. So all our investments are within an hour's drive. We believe that by working efficiently locally, we can have a great global impact because every one of our technologies that we're developing here are global impact technologies. Every one actually will probably at the end of the day be more used outside the US. But in a first stage, it's important to build these companies to give them solid foundations from which they can then have their global impact. There's definitely another, enough entrepreneurs and there's a huge huge amount of deal flow for funds like Aravipa. So no issue there. You know, we have a we have an area where a lot of people like living. We have Boulder and its traditional magnet for both software and natural foods. But we also have CSU, CU, NREL, School of Mines, a NIST, an NCAR that bring together an amazing population in the clean tech, green tech space. So yes, we are one of the five lead areas for that in the country. Thank you for the for listening to me. <laughs>